Hi and welcome to my channel where I share everything you need to know to design your life. In this video I would like to share with you the principal interior design measurements for every residential space. This rabbit hole can go deep and wide so therefore we are going to focus this video on redesigning an existing residential space. Interior design requires more than just good taste. Taking accurate measurements is a key element in a successful design project because decisions and calculations are made based on those measurements. Most interior designers do their calculations based on inches to the nearest sixteenth for say window coverings and, the, and an eighth for everything else, but you can get as finite as your math skills allow. So to design or redesign a room, where do you start? with measurements. When we are inspired to design a space, we sometimes want to get started with the pretty stuff. We want what is going to give us that emotional high, what is going to give us the most visual payoff, and that is really the wrong place to start. The best place to start is with accurate measurements. Although at the end of this particular task, the space may look exactly the same as it did when you first pulled out your measuring tape, the payoff is enormous. Typically, we hear measure, 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 measure twice, cut once, and so on. This is very true, and it is especially true in interior design. I did not create the concept of measuring spaces, but I have developed my own method for measuring spaces. Putting in the time and effort on the front end can save you a lot of time, frustration, and money throughout the project. In this video, I will be sharing my principles of measurement method, and this will be for interior design of an existing space. We will not be tearing out walls, remodeling, or replacing doors, as these will require additional consideration and structural knowledge. My method, when done properly, will eliminate the need to remeasure every time you want to explore a new concept or a new ceiling treatment, a new window treatment, a new piece of furniture, perhaps lighting. Whatever the case may be, if you follow this method, you will be prepared. In future videos, I will focus on my principles of measurement for space planning, but again, this is just preparing to do your project. So let's begin. There are basically 12 steps, so I'm going to try to move through them rather quickly to keep this from being too long. Step one, draw the room on grid paper. You're going to draw the parameter of the room. This does not have to be fancy. The main point is you want to get the shape of the room, and then the important thing is to have all of your numbers accurately listed out so that you can actually read them. The accuracy and clarity of being able to read the actual numbers and measurements is much more important than the perfection of your graphic drawing. You can draw the shape of your room out by hand, or you can use a basic ruler or a scale ruler and draw it to one half inch equals an inch. This is typically used in, say, kitchen design, but if we're just doing a room, sometimes it's easier to do it with a half inch scale. It just makes everything a little easier to read and to notate. Later, you can always go back and redraw it neater, either on grid paper or if you are familiar with some form of software, you can add it into that. I tend to use AutoCAD, but again, you can use anything as basic as you could use Canva or PowerPoint or anything that you have the ability to draw your lines and put your numbers. To complete the principal measurements, it is suggested that you begin in the left corner on the wall with the entry and then work clockwise from there. Now this will be done in several passes, so each time begin in the same spot and go around. Begin in the same corner and go around clockwise through the space. It's just easier if you do it in passes rather than jumping from one thing to another. It makes it easier to keep the calculations right and to, and to know that you haven't missed anything. Step two, 
measure each of the walls corner to corner, including any jut outs. So if you're going down the wall and it say, for some reason it juts out an inch or two and then goes over six inches and then goes back in, note that on your plan. Again, it doesn't matter as far as your graphics when you're drawing it, if the jut out is over here, say three quarters of the way down that main wall, and you've got it halfway, that doesn't matter where you draw it. I mean, be as accurate as you can be, but if, if it's not in the right place on the paper, that's fine. Just make sure that when you write the numbers, when you write the measurements, that those are accurate. So if it's seven feet to this jut out, and the way you drew it, it looks more like it's two feet, that's fine. Just make sure you have your numbers right, because then when you go to redraw it, you can draw it to scale, you can draw it more appropriately. Step three is to measure the wall sections. So now we're back at our starting point. You're gonna start from that left corner of your entry wall. You're going to start from that left corner and measure over to the outside edge of the molding of the door. And then you'll go to the other side of the door and you'll measure to the ne either the next obstacle or to the next corner. And you're going to do this all the way around the room, measuring each wall section and make sure you note that. You can notate these all on the same plan if you can keep your numbers separated or you can have multiple copies of your room drawing and then you can add, as you do each pass, you can add those numbers to that particular drawing and then label your drawing so that you can then compile them later. So you're going to, again, First pass, you're going to measure the wall corner to corner. Second pass, you're going to start in that same left corner of the in, at the entry wall door, and you're going to measure over to the outside molding of each thing that you come in each thing that you come to, and you're going to do that all the way around. So that'll be doors, windows, um, jut outs recesses, built-ins, whatever it is that's along that wall, do it to the outside molding. Then, above the doors and above the windows, you're going to measure from the outside top of that molding up to the bottom of your crown, and then from the crown up to the ceiling. So you'll have a measurement for your molding at the ceiling. You'll have a measurement from the bottom of that crown to the outside of either your door or window molding. And then you're going to measure, say, from the bottom of that window apron to the floor, and then from the floor up to the top of your baseboard. In case you are new to my channel, my name is Clarice Smith, and I am an interior designer and EXP realtor, and my passion is empowering you to design your life. I share design and real estate content, giving you the inside knowledge to create great spaces for the life you want to experience. Whether you are in a temporary space, selling and moving on, or designing your forever home, the content you find here is relevant to you. And then step four, you're going to measure any partial walls, pony walls, and any moldings that might be on those. Step five, now we're going to measure the doors and the windows. You're going to measure from outside molding to outside molding for your width and your height. And you're going to do that on all doors and all windows. And then you're going to measure the width and the height of the inside of the frame. So if it's a door, it'll be from side to side on the inside of the, where you walk through, it'll be from side to side. And then it'll be from the floor up to the top of that frame. Not the outside molding, just the opening that you would pass through. On your windows, you're going to do the same thing. It's gonna be from inside to inside and from bottom to top on the inside, the actual window. And then you're going to measure from the edge of the window molding back to where the actual window is. That would be your recess. You, you, you need to know that recess. This comes in handy when you're wanting to put in blinds or shutters. You have to know what that inset is so that you would know what measurement you would use to order those items. So you'll measure that inset. Also note the door swing 
uh, or the swing and the degree of the swing if you have casement windows and also doors. So which way does it open? How wide is it? So if you measure your, you can measure your door panel, the actual panel, like that, the actual panel is the moving part of your door. Measure the width of that, that will tell you the door swing. So if it's a 30 inch door, you're gonna have a 30 inch swing. If you have a casement window and, and your inside measurement is 30, then you got fit, you'll have 15 for each of those sections and they open up so then you know what your swing is and indicate which direction that they, they open into. Do they open into the room? Do they open outside of the room? It would mean so much to me if you would subscribe and become part of our community of powerful people and help me to reach more people, empowering them to design their life. Step six, you're going to measure any permanent fixtures in the space. That would be anything that is a soffit, banquet, hearth, fireplace, any recesses, window benches, anything that is a permanent structure in the space. Permanent meaning it, meaning it is built in in some way. So you want to notate that what it is and the measurements for that item. Step number seven, you're going to measure and locate switches, outlets, security components, vents, HVAC vents, um, any kind of controls that are on the wall or intrude in the space. You're going, to, you're going to measure and note those. Now how you're going to do this is a two-point measuring system. For example, if you have a light switch, and let's say that light switch is located about six inches from the edge of the molding as you come in the door. You're going to measure from the edge of your molding to the center of that switch, which is, if, if it's the old toggle kind, it'll be right to that toggle. So you're going to measure over to that, then you're going to measure up from the floor, and that will give you um, the right angle of where the center of that switch is. And then you're going to measure the switch. Is it a two by three or whatever? Whatever the component is, measure it, because you're going to have the measurement to the center, you're going to have the measurement of the item itself or the component itself, and therefore you can notate that on your plan without any difficulties. Step number eight, you're going to, to measure the depth and the width of any built-ins. If this is a bookcase, if this is a pass-through, what a ledge, recesses, seats, whatever it is, you're going to the depth and the width of that structure. Step number nine, you're going to measure the ceiling height from the floor to the ceiling. And if you have a sloped ceiling or a, a sunken floor, whatever the case may be, if you have, if your ceiling is at different levels, you want to measure all of those different levels and notate what it is. So let's say you have a sloped ceiling and near the window, it's 12 feet. And then back up toward the center of the house, it's 23 feet. You want to notate that or if it drops off because it, you have a sunken living room and, and you gain another, say, foot and a half or two feet, you want to note that and you want to write sunken living room. Whatever is causing that difference, you want to notate it not only in the drawing, but in words. Step number 10, you want to measure the ceiling and find center. So if you have a square room, you want to find center and measure where that is. If you have an L-shaped room, you would split it into two. You would have your, uh, your left leg and your right leg of your L-shape. You want to measure and find center of each of those sections. Step number 11, you want to measure any interruptions in your ceiling plane. So if it's a light fixture, you'd measure to the center of where it connects to the ceiling, and then you would measure the cap itself and notate the width of that. This may also include outlets and speakers, air vents, air returns, security cameras, whatever it is, notate it and find center. For best accuracy, you want to pinpoint the center of each interruption from two points, just like we talked about doing the light switches. And then step number 12 is to measure any other fixtures or features within the space that I have not mentioned. You want to measure those and add them on there. 
there are a lot of moving parts when you are designing a space and it can be very frustrating when you have to make multiple trips and, and re-measure for everything that you want to do in the space or everything you want to explore doing within the space. The benefit to having these highly detailed measurements is that you are pretty much prepared for whatever you want to do within the space. If there is a chandelier that you come across that you just have to buy right then if you get it, then get it. You have your ceiling measurements. You know where the center of the room is. You know how high the ceiling is. You know every measurement you need in order to purchase that item. If you want window treatments, you decide, say you're, you're getting drapes and you decide to add blinds or shutters, you have those measurements. If you want to explore a different floor covering, you have those measurements. If you're dreaming of more prominent baseboards, you know what size baseboards are already in that room. You know how many feet you need. You know how high you need to have them at least and how much higher you can go before you hit the apron of the windows. So you have all of the measurements and although it takes more time in the onset to get these measurements, then you are prepared and there's less trips going back and it can possibly save you money because you are prepared to move on any deals that you find or any opportunities that come about, you are prepared. So I do have a few tips that I would like to share with you when you're doing this. So you want to set aside plenty of time to do the measurements. You do not want to rush yourself, nor do you want other people rushing you because it does take some concentration. It takes being able to be organized and any interruption or any feeling that you need to rush, that just opens up the opportunity to make a mistake. You want to use a large piece of paper, perhaps two or three, depending on how you decide to split it up. You want to draw the outline as carefully as you can and then add the measurements very clearly labeled so that you can read them later. All designers have their own method of doing this. This just happens to be how I do it because I have found that over time it saves me a lot of frustration and I am prepared for to explore whatever design element I choose to without having to interrupt my clients or myself going back and having to remeasure. Once you have completed the measurements and you've redrawn it to where that it is in a more polished and final piece, then I would add this to my design journal for that particular project so that you can keep everything in one place. So another tip I would suggest is taking photos. Take a photo from each entry into the room and then take a photo from each corner facing the other corner. So you do caddy corner from each side. If it's a square room, you do caddy corner across each side and then do straight on from each wall. Not only is this going to give you the uh, images you need for your before and after so you can compare, but what it's going to do is when you're drawing up those sketches, when you are drawing out your floor plan so that you can follow it later, and you need to reference something that's not quite clear on your drawing, then you'll have those photos there. Also, it will help you make design decisions based on visual rather than just what you have in your drawing. And the next tip I would suggest is to videotape the room. This is not in depth. This is not go around and zoom in on each thing. You can take just your cell phone stand in the middle of the room facing the entry door and very slowly go from the entry door in a circle holding your phone as steady as possible around the room and back to the entry. Do this and between the drawings, the still photos, and the videos you should have absolutely everything you need in order to plan your design or to make your selections without having to go back and remeasure. Some of the items that you may find helpful when you are doing this process is a manual tape measure, an electronic tape measure, a pack of grid paper, whether it be in a tablet or in a roll, 
Also, you need a ruler, whether that's a basic ruler or a scale ruler, and then you will need a calculator to help you make all the calculations, the measurements, and also for materials. Something else you may find helpful is having pens and pencils, markers, a notebook to put everything in, um, and then also something to hold the pencils. Now, I personally prefer a notebook that zips up because I can put samples in there, I can put my markers in there, I can put whatever I need to, and I don't have to worry about them slipping out because the worst feeling is when you need something or a sample and you have lost it. It is gone. So regardless of what color it is, regardless of if it's a fabric covered one or a leather one, just make sure it zips up and you can put your items in there. This is the one that I use. And then pencils, I prefer the Paper Mate. Now the reason I prefer these is they're triangular, they're mechanical. I do not like your basic mechanical pencils because I find that my pressure is too hard and I'm constantly breaking them and that the, the pencil lid itself is too thin. These being triangular, they're easier for me to hold. They're, they cause me less pain in my hands, so I tend to use those. And then markers, you want a fine tip and an ultra fine tip. This is going to help you with your lines. It's going to help you write the numbers without everything being very bulky. Also on the pencils, you can get refill packs. You don't have to keep buying the pencil themselves. You can get the lid refill packs, so those are good. And then I also like to have dividers in my binder because then I can divide it up, let's say floor covering, window covering, uh, paint, so on and so forth. So I, I do like to have the, the dividers. And then also I like to have highlighters because I will, one of the things that I do uh, is write out, say, a description of what I'm going to do and I can highlight anything. I can color code with it, in other words. I can highlight whatever I need to highlight. I can color code it and it's easier for me to find. So these are just some, some of the items that I personally use that I find helpful. When it comes to measuring, I do prefer to measure by myself and I always find it easier if I use the electronic and I also use a large enough manual measuring tape that I don't have to worry about it being flimsy and that's again why I like the Craftsman. I hope that if the, any of these tools will help you, that you can check them out below. There will always be links below for anything that I share in case you are interested. If you found this video helpful, here is another one and also a related playlist that you may find helpful as well. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I will see you in the next one.